my name is Shane O'Neill and I'm a photographer. I'm from uh, an area called Is Duggan in Waterford City and uh, just a lovely area, lovely time to grow up. I'm a child of the 80s. Documentary wedding would be my main style. I do a little bit of commercial photography as well, mainly food photography. My favourite subject is documentary wedding photography. It's amazing how much of an insight you can get into people's lives and relationships just because it's uh, documenting their wedding day. It's less staged and less formal and you pretty much just get to do what you like to do. People trust that you're going to deliver a narrative, a story of the day that they got married and the images tend to age better than sort of more traditional wedding photography. You're constantly learning constantly adding small little things that improve your output. I'm a bit better at identifying what I like and identifying subjects that I like and compositions. Being discreet is more important than getting the shot at any cost and staying out of the way is one of the things that I have a reputation for. Humour is the most predominant uh, emotion, like at a wedding for instance, by someone doing something awkward and you've immortalised it with the click of a shutter and they know that they've been had and they know that this is going to live on and they know that people are going to laugh at it. It's just those light-hearted moments. I try not to create any formula at all, particularly for the wedding work and just literally just go with it. See how every day has its own character, its own, its own set of emotions and just to try and kind of wait for them to present themselves and then jump on that wave. You know. For wedding work I shoot with a pair of Nikon D850s and uh, I have various different lenses that I would use as well that I'm very very happy with. I also shoot with a Hasselblad X1D which is a digital medium format camera. It's just a spectacular camera. So small and light, easy to carry around, very very portable and the results of it are jaw dropping really. So my workflow with any given client really differs on the type of client. Usually take for instance a chef if it's food photography, I just totally let them take the lead. Just interpret what they're doing from a visual point of view. So for instance if they were plating up and we were about to photograph the food, you know, I might instruct to say that that piece of leaf might be too big and it might be too distracting in the frame, but I will allow the chef to try and kind of get their own kind of stamp on it as much as possible. If I had to take just one piece of kit to a desert island, um, it would probably be one of my Polaroid cameras, um, specifically the Polaroid Land Camera 180. It's just a beautiful instrument, a beautiful camera, um, it, so easy to use. Uh, uh, and the benefit of it is that you get to see the print straight away and you have a hard copy. It's just magic. Photography nowadays, as with all kind of consumable media, is pretty quickly forgotten. I feel that sometimes photographers can overvalue their work and uh, they can put distracting watermarks on images. I feel that maybe the best way to do it is just to kind of put out low resolution images but still kind of try and maintain the quality, try and make them enjoyable to view. I would have a fairly uh, liberal image usage policy with most of my clients anyway. I just make high resolution images available to them and particularly with say wedding clients and wedding vendors for instance. Their work has made my work look good. So I just feel that that should be shared a little bit. So I, I don't aggressively protect the imagery. I just think that there's just so much out there that there's just no need to do it anymore. I, I, I like being my own boss. I like being able to go uh, places in my own time. I have an editing system. I use Adobe Lightroom and a keeper is going to be number one. So if I press one, that's an image that the client is going to see and going to get. And by pressing number two, that's something that I'm going to keep just for myself. So, for instance, if I'm photographing a wedding in Connemara uh, or Croatia, anywhere like that, uh, and if I see something on my journey or on my route or as I go, I, I will photograph that for myself and I'll kind of collect that later on by pressing number two. At the end of the year, I collect all of those number twos and uh, I have this uh, bank of images um, that have nothing at all to do with wedding photography or any kind of photography th uh, that I've been shooting on that day and uh, so that's my kind of work that's work that i keep for myself um and it's kind of generally abstract or sort of minimal landscapes or it could be anything really like that um at the end of the year then i try and make a little book or do something with those images uh, so even though i'm there for a client i'm kind of there for myself one of my favorite pieces of work was from a trip to la Haya in california at the start of the year i had like a few days off to myself where i got to wander around neighborhoods with my Hasselblad X1D. I picked up out there a few sequences and series of images 
that I absolutely love. Just a combination of how colourful it is out there and how different it is for me. It might be normal for someone living in, in La Haya to walk around, but just for me, just to see all these different interesting landscapes and architecturally the houses, how different they are. One moment that was very special that happened earlier on this year. It was a wedding and it was on an island called Majette, about two hours from Dubrovnik. That night, as the sun went down, there was no clouds. And because it was so far from any light pollution, uh, when we looked up, like it was just this spectacular array of stars that none of us had ever seen. Any of the guests, the bride and groom, myself, I managed to get one shot that brought in those stars. And then after that, what happened was everybody just went up onto this veranda and lay down. <laughs> literally just lying down on the ground and looking up at the stars, at this spectacular array. Um, the Milky Way was out and it was in full force and everyone just stayed there for about 15 minutes and uh, lying down. It was weird, it was wonderful, and it was just one of those situations that you'd probably never come across, I think, uh, uh, had you not been a wedding photographer uh, and gone to this island. The tip I give uh, most is the one that's least liked. I just feel that being a photographer is not all about taking photographs. And sometimes to just try and have a good customer service grounding can help an awful lot. Working as a waiter in a good restaurant can teach you the right etiquette and how to treat people and the right way to do things. And um, that often gets picked up on, like uh, particularly kind of from uh, existing and former clients where they will comment on how well things are handled from a non-photographic perspective. Besides that, I mean, I, I feel that um, that graphic design is a fast track to visual literacy. I, I just feel like that having some kind of graphic design background really does help. I feel as well that in today's world that it's good to have Photoshop and editing as a good tandem skill. The funny thing is for me, people assume that because I'm a photographer that I automatically have a, 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 an unbelievable and tremendous knowledge uh, of Photoshop. That's not the case. I'm still learning in that regard too. But I think if I went back maybe 15 or 20 years, that I probably would have treated that side of things a, a little bit more seriously. My dad gave this to me and he put then at the back of it there like a uh, first camera. And as he put down, he's a Bob Dylan fan, uh, a simple twist of fate because he was never supposed to get it. He just found himself in a position where uh, someone gave it to him and he brought it home. And that's where the fascination uh, started for me. So it's just, yeah, it's nice little, a bit of personal history to have and um, it still works as well. I, I just can't imagine what I would be if I wasn't a photographer really. It, it, it's ingrained in who I am and it's an important part of my identity.